Thank you so much for having me here. And thank you, Arun, for the wonderful introduction. It's a pleasure to be here addressing you all uh, today and talking about something that is very, very close to my heart as well. Um, some of you know me and uh, some of you have even heard me and some of you have even uh, worked with me. Uh, however, there are some people who uh, are probably joining in for the first time and listening to me for the first time. So I would just say that just hang in there because I will be sharing some very exciting and new things that you as a leader can incorporate in your team or in your organization to increase uh, engagement with your workforce or even for you know increasing productivity in your team. So just hang in there and just let's, let's just move ahead. So uh, today's topic is all about uh, corporate wellness culture. Uh, these are few names of, well, these were the names that could come on the slide. So I have just listed down a few names, but there were plenty of others uh, where I engaged with these organizations. And if you see these, all the organizations are from uh, different sectors. So uh, if you, if you, I mean, if you realize that all these organizations have understood the impact of corporate wellness or well-being in their organization and that's the reason why i was uh, you know engaged uh, with them in order to bring out that change in the culture uh, of bringing corporate wellness in their day-to-day -day and regular working uh, life of the employees so uh, moving on just to tell you a brief about uh, the names that i have worked with i would like to bring this particular part uh, to your notice that why there has been an immediate surge or why there has been a sudden surge in understanding wellness, in understanding well-being. As I mentioned that the pandemic has created those areas where we have realized that wellness is an important area for us, uh, whether we are uh, working as uh, employees, uh, leaders, business uh, entrepreneurs, at any level, every level, in, uh, you know, I would say has uh, brought that importance of well-being and wellness in our lives. And there has been a lot of wellness opportunities that uh, that have got initiated uh, by different corporates in different areas, in different departments as well for the workforce. Um, there have been individuals, uh, because of the work that I do, there have been a lot of individuals who connected with me over the past uh, few years, in the last two years since the pandemic hit us. And the numbers have only increased only because, again, the, the reason is that there has been a sudden uh, understanding and awareness that it is important for us to understand what is wellness and how we can bring that well-being in our life. So there have been a lot of individuals seeking out alternate ways to create wellness and to transform their lives. Um, there is a growing need to focus more towards mental and emotional well-being. So as I mentioned earlier, while there is, a, uh, there is an importance towards uh, physical well-being, Mental and emotional well-being has also played a very important role. In fact, in the next few slides, I will be talking about few, uh, you know, surveys or few statistics that uh, that will tell you that there has been um, a lot of research done where it has been found that mental uh, well-being and emotional well-being play only an important role, more important role when it comes to uh, when you know working or even when it comes to living a life. So I will be sharing that in the next few slides. Then stress and anxiety has been an increasing concern. And uh, in fact, WHO had uh, you know, listed down stress as a worldwide epidemic much before COVID pandemic uh, even happened. So uh, if you notice that stress has always been a part of our lives and we have always been uh, you know, kind of uh, affected by it. Now, it is only more important for us to take the right actions as leaders to make sure that the stress and anxiety do not impact our productivity or employee engagement. Then there has been a lot of uh, innovative solutions that have come out to motivate and uplift the uh, workforce and the individuals as well. So it's no longer the same way uh, that all the organizations used to work where, you know, they would uh, conduct a lot of team off sites or there will be team dinners or team building exercises. A lot of organizations have moved away from that also because of the fact that there has been a lot of virtual uh, working that has come up, but, but that is one reason. However, the second reason is also the fact that the organizations now are moving more towards corporate wellness culture. 
they are understanding that it's not just about doing one or two activities which talk about well-being it's about building a culture of well-being in the workforce uh, in the work a workplace areas as well and that's the reason why because of all this uh, immediate surge towards well-being i have conducted over 500 virtual uh, coaching and counseling sessions just in the past one year and there have been over 200 virtual presentations world over that i had conducted again just in the past one year since covid 19 pandemic hit us so you can imagine that this uh, pandemic has brought a lot of importance towards well-being and i feel that it is important not just because the pandemic had hit us but it was probably important earlier as well that we would give importance and we would give that attention towards creating a culture of well-being in our workplace areas so moving on now that i have shared this insight with all of you uh, this knowledge with all of you that why there has been an immediate surge in well-being or uh, why has there been um, why so many you know organizations in different sectors are engaging uh, to talk more about mental well-being now that you have that insight as a leader what will you do with that i have a question to you all so this is more like a rhetorical question so i'm going to answer that as well uh, well, as a leader, I feel that with this insight, it's important to realize that uh, when COVID-19 hit us, you know, a lot of times when I would talk to people, they would all say that, you know, we were unprepared for something like this. Nobody uh, thought that something like this can happen. Now, taking the learning from there, if we are able to create a, a solution wherein we are prepared or we are ready for even those things that we will never think that we will be prepared for. If we use that kind of foresight as a leader, you will realize that even in the most difficult or challenging times, we will always find a solution. And that solution will not be a solution which will uh, create more uh, resistance, but it will be something that will be accepted easily. So that's the insight that I would like all of you to use. And that insight. Uh, will help us or help you rather in terms of building not just uh, one solution or a one-stop solution but building a culture where we uh, as employees where people uh, like in your team the workforce easily accept the change is, is resilient towards that uh, you know difficult situation and is able to come out of those difficult situations easily and this is where the foresight comes into play. As a leader, I'm sure all of you have to use your foresight at, you know, at different occasions. So why, what better occasion than this where you use your foresight to be prepared for something that you will not think that you will be ready for. And this is where the corporate wellness culture comes into being. Because as I mentioned earlier, corporate wellness culture is not just about building a culture for uh, physical well-being for uh, taking care of your fitness it's just not about uh, physical fitness but it's also about mental fitness it's also about spiritual fitness and this is where corporate wellness culture helps you to build that acceptance uh, where, wherein people are not resistant to change wherein people are ready to accept any difficult or challenging situation so having said uh, you know or talked about corporate wellness culture a lot let me just make you understand what exactly is corporate wellness culture just to give you a brief about it well it's a it's a it's a culture or it's a, it's basically a way by which you create a, a, an environment which promotes physical emotional career financial social well-being and even spiritual well-being which i have not mentioned here but that is also a part of our uh, well-being dimension so a lot of times when we talk about well-being, it's not just one thing. It's all these things that come into play. And when you bring it all together, it makes a lot of difference because that's when you are able to bring that, you know, a sense of uh, wellness in your organization, a sense of uh, uh, connectivity in your organization. And that helps in uh, increasing productivity, enhancing the engagement with the employees. Similarly, it is also about uh, a culture which helps in developing adversity quotient in our workplace. Now, because of the pandemic that hit us, 
many people, and in fact, I also advocated on this part where I said that it's very important to increase our adversity portion. We should be ready to manage and handle any adversity that comes in our life and be able to accept those adversities as well. Because whenever we are hit with any problem or a difficult situation, the first thing that we do is we deny it. And that is what a lot of people did during, uh, you know, when the pandemic had just hit us. So it's very important to understand that adversity portion has to be developed right from the beginning. And if we start now, even now, it's not late. It is something that you, if you start now, you will be able to develop and build it as time passes and we will be ready for any other challenging or difficult situation that comes in our life. Then cultivating a mindset of living a resilient life. Uh, I think a lot of us had forgotten what is resilience because of the fact that you know everything had become easy for many people or it was coming easily. Like even if you want to say, uh, you know, if you want to order uh, you know, some food, you just have to pick up your phone and, you know, open the app and just order. So it, it, it has made life easier, you know, those kinds of technology, uh, technological advances. However, uh, that also leads to creating a sense of not being resilient of doing something which is, or, uh, you know, accepting something which is, uh, which doesn't come easy to us. So at this time, during the pandemic, uh, resilience played a very, very important role and cultivating a mindset to live a resilient life is very, very uh, crucial when it comes to uh, any organization or as a leader, if I, if I have to say, as a leader, it's very important for uh, you to develop that resilient mindset in your workforce so that any change, any difficult situation can be handled well. Now, like I mentioned that there are certain statistics that I would like to uh, uh, share with you. And even here, I've, I've mentioned that depression symptoms had increased in general because of COVID-19 in the last one, uh, one year. So there has been a huge increase, uh, which is a threefold increase. In fact, I would like to share here that uh, there was a research that was done globally and uh, more than 75% of people have been identified with having some sort of mental health issue at this time. So if you can imagine that the numbers are running really, really high. In fact, it's like almost like one in uh, six people, which is what is being talked about, that you know everybody who's, uh, who's gone through this pandemic is going through some kind of mental health issue. And it's very important as a leader to give it due consideration to ensure that something can be done to uh, make sure that you know that those kind of problems can be eased out. So moving on, when we talk about well-being, what does it do for us? Well, the first thing that it does is that it is a very very important factor in motiv motivating the workforce. A lot of organizations, when they had run uh, surveys to find out what is it that motivates the employees or the workforce in their organization, it was found that the organizations that focus more on wellness of their employees is what motivates those employees to uh, not change their jobs or to remain in the organization or to even work with complete uh, loyalty and with complete, uh, uh, you know, absolute attention and focus. So well-being is a very, very important factor when it comes to uh, motivating the workforce. workforce. So in an employee sentiment survey, I, I would like to read it here, that it was found social connectivity as an essential practice to keep employees motivated. Considering the fact that there has been a lot of virtual uh, working, social connectivity had kind of got distorted. However, I would even say that when we were working in the offices, still the social connectivity was always a problem. While we were there, there was still a, a social disconnection that a lot of people felt. And that also created uh, 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 you know, a bit of a uh, uh, issue in the motivation factor when it comes to uh, seeing how well uh, the employees are motivated. So social connectivity is an important factor and social connectivity happens when we bring people together, when we talk about something which is common to all and wellness, I feel, is a common subject that it, you know, brings people together. So social connectivity is, again, a very important aspect when it comes to keeping your employees motivated. Now, the second point is a very interesting point because it's, again, not something which is connected only to COVID-19, 
but even before that however in covid 19 it just got accentuated it just uh, came into you know uh, attention of everybody and it it's it, like it says that uh, the way employers or leaders treat their employees during the covid 19 pandemic will define what type of employer they are or what type of leader they are and this will impact the employee loyalty motivation and in overall employee and customer satisfaction so if you can see that just by the way how a leader uh, you know uh, behaves or the leader creates opportunities for their uh, for their workforce will define lot of other things it will define the motivation it will define loyalty it will define overall employee and customer satisfaction so the stakes are really high when it comes to uh, managing uh, the the workforce in terms of well being now as mental health has dipped due to covid 19 leaders need to develop uh, tools different ways to create a culture that supports the work it's very important to now find different ways it's no longer like i mentioned earlier it's not no longer about uh, just doing team off site or anything or just having a, a yoga session done in the office or even a virtual yoga session done it has to go beyond that it has to be about awareness how much awareness are you creating about well being wellness uh, that will work well for the leaders in order to motivate their workforce so new age employee engagement this is just a small uh, something that i feel is equally important where organizations are now engaging in fact if i have to talk about india uh, procter and gamble is one of one of the organizations uh, which is openly engaging in uh, emotion you know in in terms of corporate wellness when they are uh, engaging with experts uh, mental health experts and other experts to talk on emotional wellbeing so as similarly there are many other organizations who are right now looking at various uh, avenues by which they can increase employee engagement not just by the conventional ways but by new innovative ways moving on how does it impact the entire business transformation now when we talk about transformation we are looking at not just one area the moment you start of uh, putting your focus on uh, corporate wellbeing and wellness uh, you will realize that it impacts the entire gamut of, of the organization it's not just one thing it's not just uh, you know two things it's it's everything so the moment you give importance to the wellbeing and the wellness of your employees these are the short term and long term gains that leaders can expect and you can see the list is pretty long so it starts from productivity and it goes up till the path where it says you know you will be increasing the levels of adaptability flexibility in your team it will heighten the happiness portion it will develop a culture of you know togetherness in the company and in the team not just one thing that uh, a leader would gain by uh, including corporate wellness culture in their team or in their organization but the 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 you know the solution will only give you maximum results if you involve or include corporate wellness culture in your organization now if i just would like to share this one small uh, statistic here which was done which was a survey done by harvard where it found that for every dollar that was spent on employee wellness the medical cost that uh, the organization would be spending had fallen down uh, 3.27 dollars and absenteeism cost had dropped to 2.73 dollars this is for only 1 dollar which was spent on employee wellness so you can imagine that the returns are so very high when it comes to employee uh, corporate wellness culture building that corporate wellness culture and if i have to talk about corporate wellness culture it is very important to have a very uh, well designed customized corporate wellness culture for your own organization which talks and which deals with the areas that need to be focused for your own organization because that will positively impact your productivity the team productivity the organizational productivity and also increase the engagement within the employee setup so a very well designed corporate wellness uh, program is what one needs to look at now this brings us to the end of our session today um 
I would just like to share some uh, information about me and I would uh, ask you to, you know, feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions or anything that you would like to ask on how you can build that corporate wellness culture in your organization or any help that you would need in order to uh, create that culture within your organization. So that would be all from my end. And thank you so much for listening in. And I would now like to open the session for some questions. If there are any, I would love to answer them also. Arun? Uh, thank you very much, Ekta Sibal. Absolutely brilliant presentation. Such a good takeaway for every $1 spent on wellness, I calculate $6 total. $3.27 plus $2.73, $6 return, 6x benefit. I mean, which top executive can ignore such a justification? And Absolutely. also an, another fascinating, cultivate a mindset to live a resilience life. Such an expectation on the top executive to perform. So yes. great stuff stuff over there. Ekta. Now, uh, just one question coming in that as a, as a senior executive, on a, if I was to build a wellness program or an initiative, what would be the recommended areas to start with? Some sort of thumb rule. Go ahead, Ekta. Sure, Arun. Yeah, very interesting and a very pertinent question, I would say. Uh, well, areas can be many, but to start with, I would say, especially in the situation that we have just been through, and we are still going through, a lot of people are still uh, you know, going through the pandemic and they are going through what they, uh, the, 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 all the complications or all the things that they are uh, experiencing right now. So I would say that at this moment, the first thing and foremost thing that needs to be taken care of is the mental well-being and the emotional well-being of the workforce. So whatever activities, whatever, um, you know, uh, things that, that a leader can do in order to create awareness about mental well-being, about uh, solutions, what one can do in order to create a, a, you know, a strong mind, in order to bring resilience in their life, to you know, manage any other difficult or uh, challenging situation that they may, that may, uh, you know, that they may experience. I think that's the area I would say uh, you know, organizations to start looking at at least to start with mental and emotional well-being is uh, what one needs to, uh, you know, take uh, care of and give that uh, focus to. Thank you very much, Ekta, for that feedback and look forward to engaging with you once again. Thank you very much for absolutely brilliant session over there. Likewise, Arun, likewise. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you.